Hi, and welcome back to one of our online lectures here in World History. Today we're going to look at the Crusades. In our Middle Ages unit, we've talked a lot about Christianity. Today we're going to see how Christianity, in a way, may have gone too far uh, and certainly started something that really didn't end well for both sides. Uh, and there is debate on who's really at fault here, the Christians or the Muslims. I think both play a, definitely a big role here. Um, but a lot of it starts with a decision made by a pope. So uh, we're going to look at Pope Urban II and his decision to call for the First Crusade. So we have one constructive response question. I think it's a fairly easy question, fairly straightforward. The question says, summarize the Crusades, including causes and effects. And there's no doubt we're going to look at a lot of those as we progress here today. So what will we learn? Well, we're going to talk about what is a crusade. Maybe this is brand new to you and you don't know what a crusade is. So we've got to start there. Uh, then we're going to look at the social, political, spiritual, and economic reasons to go on crusade. And this will certainly involve our causes uh, because a lot of people will find various reasons to want to be a part of this. Uh, we'll talk about how Pope Urban II starts this and then we'll look at these four reasons why people went on crusade. There are multiple crusades. Uh, different sources have different numbers. Some say there's seven crusades. I've seen as many as nine. We're only going to focus on the first uh, and second and third. In fact, we'll really focus on the first and third crusades uh, as those are really the quote-unquote more significant crusades. But we'll talk about what happens in those uh, really as a, a short story. And then in the end, we'll talk about what really the Crusades did for both Europe and the Holy Lands of Jerusalem. Uh, so we'll talk about the effects of the Crusades. So that's really where we're going with all of this today. So let's start off with the Crusades. We need to answer the question, what is a Crusade? Those who are unfamiliar with this kind of need a working definition. So the Crusades were a series of holy wars involving the journey of thousands of Europeans to reclaim the Holy Land of Jerusalem in the name of Christianity. Uh, so we're going to look at specifically why this occurred and, and who you know, was the one behind this. But in a nutshell, it's really uh, the Christians wanting Jerusalem uh, to be under Christian control. And they're going to go down to Jerusalem and they're going to kill Jews. They're going to kill Muslims in the process to try to make that happen. Now, in all, there were eight or nine crusades, kind of depending on your source and which uh, crusades you actually consider crusades. We're going to talk about the Children's Crusade here briefly. And, you know, some sources uh, are, are a little bit different in, in how they portray which crusades are crusades. So understand the numbers are really irrelevant, but this does go on for actually about 300 years. And when I say crusades plural, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about maybe as many as eight or nine of them that took place. When were the Crusades? Well, they started in 1093. Um, 1095 is another year that's been thrown out there. Um, and they last for about 300 years. Now, what we're looking at here is Europe. And the Crusades uh, themselves were journeys. And there's a couple different ways you could go. You could actually go down through Italy, across the Adriatic Sea. A lot of people went by land, went through Constantinople, and eventually made it down to Jerusalem here. Um, you can see that would be a very difficult journey. It would be about 3,000 miles. Uh, it might take you two to three years to make that happen. And so this was a very, very big undertaking. And those that did it uh, were very, very passionate about going on crusade. We'll take a look at why that is here very shortly. So, why go on crusade? Well, there's social, economic, spiritual, and political reasons to do so. The social reason that some people went on crusade is it was an opportunity to get some knights to stop fighting each other and go fight a new foe. These knights threatened peace in Europe. At this point in time in the Middle Ages, there was actually a population boom. And so there was an excess of people that not all were needed in the fields anymore. Some of them became knights. Some of them were just looking for an adventure. And so sometimes these knights got restless and, you know, after all, they're trained to fight. And so they would fight each other. And, uh, you know, that would cause havoc. So here's an opportunity to say, all right, you guys go down there. 
fight for Christianity, fight for Jerusalem, and stop fighting here. So that was one reason some people went. There were several economic reasons. One of the first economic reasons is the Holy Lands of Jerusalem were just generally wealthier than Europe, and many wanted to go get their share of that wealth. You have to remember, even back to the Byzantine Empire, under the Romans, the eastern half of the empire was very, very wealthy. A lot of trade routes, a lot of trade caravans still moved through this region, so naturally uh, there was still wealth there. It were the Western half, you know, Europe especially, was still pretty poor at this point in time in the Middle Ages. Continuing on our theme of economics, uh, younger sons who did not stand to inherit their father's property said, hey, I want some of that wealth. I want some of that adventure down in the Holy Lands. So they decided to embark on the crusade. After all, it was customary in the Frankish kingdoms and, and some of the other territories in Europe for the male, uh, the eldest male heir to inherit all the property. Well, naturally, if uh, there were more kids, they were going to get nothing. So this was an opportunity for them to actually get out of Europe and go stake a claim for some of that wealth uh, down in Jerusalem and the Holy Land surrounding it. Last economic reason is there were a lot of merchants, just like there are today, who said, hey, you want to go on crusade, it's going to be a very expensive endeavor. It might take you two to three years, you might need a lot of food, you might need a lot of supplies, uh, so I'll supply you a loan so that you can buy all the stuff that you need. You might need to pay servants to come with you on crusade. Some people who went on crusade brought multiple servants, almost like a little village with them, because they needed all those people to help take care of them and you know, get supplies and things like that. So, of course, if I'm going to supply you with a loan, I'm going to ask for interest back in return. So some of these merchants were able to make a lot of money off of financing uh, other people's journeys to Jerusalem. The political reason to go on crusade had everything to do with the Pope. At this point in time, the Catholic Church was the main entity in Europe. But there was also the Eastern Orthodox branch of Christianity, really uh, around Greece and around Constantinople. We had talked about that in our Roman unit. And this was an opportunity for the Pope to gain the uh, territory of Jerusalem for the Catholic Church rather than his Byzantine rival, the head of the Eastern Orthodox Church. So it was a chance for the Pope to gain territory instead of the, his Byzantine rival, who might want that land as well. After all, Jerusalem is one of the holiest cities on the planet. It's where Jesus was crucified. It's where Muhammad arose into heaven. It's where the Jewish temple was. Uh, so there's so many reasons why people would want Jerusalem. And so basically the Pope said, hey, if we get it now, I don't have to worry about uh, my Byzantine rival getting this land. The last reason to go on crusade was probably the most alluring for people. Uh, the spiritual reason here is the Pope said, if you go on crusade, if you go fight on crusade and even die on crusade, you automatically get a ticket to heaven. Now, I say this is a big Christian contradiction because they're basically saying it's okay to go kill infidels. Infidel means non-believer. Christians and Jews, or sorry, Muslims and Jews. And so a lot of Jews were slaughtered on the Crusades, and thousands and thousands and thousands of Muslims were killed as well. In fact, when the Christians take Jerusalem during the First Crusade, they basically butcher every Muslim that lived there. And, you know, that's a violation of thou shalt not kill. It does not say on the Ten Commandments that you can kill non-believers. Uh, it just says thou shalt not kill. So that's a really big Christian contradiction. But the Pope made that decree. The Pope was the most influential person in Europe. Lots of people couldn't read or write in Europe, and they blindly followed their authority. They blindly followed the Pope because that's what they were trained to do. So if the Pope told you to do something, you did it. On top of that, you didn't have the education to reason it out in your brain that what you were about to do was wrong. To go on crusade and kill Muslims was wrong. Education teaches us how to use our brains and how to reason and say, hey, maybe that isn't right. Maybe that does go against what the Bible says or what the Ten Commandments say, and maybe we shouldn't do that. But again, 
most of the people of Europe lacked an education and they blindly followed their Pope so a lot of people would buy into this very easily. So uh, those are the main causes of the Crusades. When we come back we're gonna look at the meat of the Crusades and kinda understand what happened, uh, what was the result of all this and, and really uh, kinda look at this with a magnifying glass and understand it a little bit better. So go ahead and hit stop and queue up part two.